Hey y'all, my name is Travis Lee and today I'm going to be walking through a series of budget updates. This originally started with one request which was the ability to display cost item custom fields directly on the budget table. And as Casey, our CTO, started building this out, naturally we threw more in, right? We threw in a bunch of feature requests and again what started as one became a big project and we probably have 10 feature requests in here. So I'm really excited to talk through this, let's dive right into it. If we go into the budget, you'll notice it looks a little bit different, but it's not earth changing by any means. You have the view picker in the top left, you have the budget table with groups and items, so pretty familiar. But the most stark difference, of course, is this search, which allows you to very quickly find items that you're looking for. I get many phone calls uh, from people who have built out very long budgets and it can be difficult sometimes to locate certain things so this is going to make life so much easier to locate those items again this is searching the item name description the cost type the cost code as well as all the custom fields tied to that particular item so super powerful tool and you'll notice how fast it is just like the rest of the site uh, to the right of that we have four buttons full screen preview import and export these four buttons existed right here prior but they were so small that even a member of our team had no clue that the full screen option existed. This provides you a bit more real estate to work within the budget to get a little bit more context. I'm a big fan of using it, uh, definitely recommend it, and you can hit escape to, uh, to get back out. The preview button allows you to preview what your budget's gonna look like on a document. Import and export, those are self-explanatory. But to the right, this is our new saving system. So if you go through here and you make a series of changes, sure to the cost, maybe to the price as well, and also the descriptions for certain things, all of this is being batched up. What I mean by that is it's all being held before we save it, and now we can do undos and redos if you wanna make adjustments to the changes you just made. Maybe you go too far, like, eh, I don't like it. Just undo your changes, and then you can save from there. That's what will lock it in. The biggest winner out of all of this, in my eyes, is for the people that have deleted their budgets in the past. That was an immediate save in the past, but no longer is the case. If I go delete this whole thing, I can discard that change, I can get rid of it, and I still have all my content. So really happy about that. Uh, moving into the budget table, I wanna highlight along the left-hand side, we have now numbered all of our uh, rows. Again, with the search function, just trying to make this easier to find stuff. So instead of saying, you know, locate the framing line, just say look at line 55, and you'll know immediately where to go for that thing. So a really big fan of that one. These are still mass action, so if I select everything or if I select a few things, it's going to allow me to apply those mass actions on the right-hand side. So definitely a big fan of that. Uh, for the moving tool, so if you move things around with these arrows, we modified this a bit to work a little bit better. You'll notice it's snappier, and the cool thing is it also works with the changes, so I can discard if I move something to the wrong spot. Another thing we did is on hover, you'll notice the blue outline. This is to make it more obvious what's inputable or not. So if you go over to the budget that costs and committed costs, these are great for displaying what documents uh, made up this number right here, but it's not a number that we can go override unless we create a document. So we wanted to highlight the things that uh, are inputable just by clicking into it and then you can tab around just like you would on an Excel spreadsheet. Another beautiful thing that we added in uh, that I think is often overlooked are keyboard shortcuts. So if you do the question mark on your keyboard, you're gonna see this guide that shows you all the keyboard shortcuts that are available to you. This always was possible. So very quickly go into your catalog or go into your settings. You type in G, then S. But within the budget, you can now add groups and items on the fly. So I don't have to touch my mouse, right? So if I do N and then I, now I'm creating a new item. If I do N and G, now I'm creating a group. The purpose is, is speed, right? We're trying to make this faster for you, so I definitely recommend starting to use these because once you get used to them, they're a really awesome tool to know. So I'm gonna do N, I, and let's say it's something brand new. This small change here, you'll notice whenever you create a new item, you're not gonna see the pop-up uh, every time you create a new item now. That information is still available to you through show details, and you can copy to the catalog on the right-hand side, but we wanted it m to make it faster, so as you add new items, you can just rattle those off very quickly, and then save your changes, send it off to the customer, and you'll be good to go. Moving on from there, uh, I also wanted to uh, talk about this gear icon, which is honestly where most of the power of this update is gonna be found. If you click into here, you'll see along the right-hand side, you have this grouping and filter section. 
where you can change what you're grouping by. The default is by cost group. It's how you build the groups and put the items within it. But we can change it and say, show me everything based off the cost type or the cost code. This has always been an option, but the new options we added are by allowance. So if you wanted to see all your allowance items together or potentially no groups, which is a flat list of all the items. Um, that's just another way to kind of slice and dice it. You can also apply filters though. So similar to the search, if you want to see a subset of all of the items, you can do it based off the cost type. So if, for example, I wanted to see all my materials, I could. Or if you want to do it based off a singular cost code as well. But let's get to the, the big dog here. The flagship update is scroll to the bottom and you'll see the ability to turn on those cost item custom fields. I'll close out of this drawer, scroll to the right, and you can see all of these custom fields for these items are right here displayed in line with the ability to update them. So this works the same as making changes to any numbers. It's going to batch my changes and when I'm ready to lock those in, then I can save up top or I can undo the changes I've made as well. So this supports all the different the types of custom fields from dates to uh, text fields to pick lists. You can set all of those up here and I'll finish this video by showing you where you can create these custom fields. But how would you use these? I think the most obvious example comes to mind is like a material list. So if you skip over to one I've created called material procurement, this is a list that's been filtered for only my materials on the project. And I've included all the details here and excluded all the price and profit and stuff like that. I don't really care about that because I'm really just trying to understand this is the the list of items this is how much of each item this is what I intend to spend and then I see off to the right what have I done have I completed this order have I received it is it in progress uh, what is the skew for that thing what's the arrival date what vendor are we using for this thing again this is entirely custom so one thing I'm excited about is hearing from you guys how you're using these custom uh, fields in tandem with the custom views to come up with the relevant list. And the thing I like the most about this is because we filtered out all the labor items and things like permits and things that aren't just material, it just reduces the noise. I'm only seeing the things I care about here because we filtered that down. So I'm a huge fan of this update. Um, I'm really excited about it and I'm excited to see what custom views that you guys come up with. To kind of wrap this all up, I'm going to skip out of the budget temporarily go into the settings and then go into custom fields and if you scroll down this is where you can add those new custom fields on the item so we have a few suggestions on the right hand side but the world is your oyster click the plus custom field option you can choose the type of input whether it's a date email uh, pick list text field URL that's another great one the URL so what's the link to the website where I'm buying this thing add that field here give it a name and now I can start tracking in the budget so Super exciting update. There's, there's a lot going on here. I probably missed a few things, but I just want to give you the high level overview. If you guys have any questions at all, please contact your CS rep or reach us at support at Look forward to hearing what you guys do with it. Thanks so much.